Welcome to Level Up Mechanics. My name is Chris, and in today's video, we're going to be doing some upgrades to my 8th gen Honda Civic. We're going to be adding three new Pro Sport JDM series gauges, which will include oil pressure, wideband air fuel ratio, and my favorite, a boost gauge. In addition to the gauges, we'll also be installing some gauge pods. I will be adding a 3D printed AC vent gauge pod. And last but not least, my favorite piece thus far on my Honda Civic, which is going to be a carbon fiber dual gauge pod from XV Racing. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started. Here's pretty much everything that we're going to install today onto the Honda Civic. I don't have all of the parts in view as I will go over them later in the video, but the main components we'll be installing today include this custom made carbon fiber dual gauge pod from XV Racing. In addition, we're also going to install some Pro Sport JDM gauges. These are both 52 millimeter gauges that fit directly into the carbon fiber gauge pod. The gauges that I'll be installing on my Honda Civic will be an oil pressure gauge and a wideband air fuel ratio gauge. So in addition to the items that I just went over, I eventually added a third gauge to the Honda Civic. I found a 3D printed AC vent gauge pod and I added a third gauge, which would be this boost gauge over here. I added the boost gauge up top to go along with the oil pressure gauge over here, because with these two gauges, I can daisy chain and feed power from one gauge to the other. So that simplifies the wiring for adding the third gauge. Uh, in addition to all of these, I also picked up an oil pressure sensor adapter from Amazon and this will allow me to tap in to the factory oil pressure sensor location, add the stock sensor up top right here, and then I have three side ports right here that I can use to add an additional oil pressure sensor for the Pro Sport oil pressure gauge. Uh, and you can also use this if you're running a turbo and you need an oil pressure feed line, anything of that nature. Uh, but for right now, this is solely just going to be used so I can still use the factory oil pressure sensor and add the aftermarket oil pressure sensor uh, to the Honda Civic. Both of these gauges come with their own hardware in addition to universal gauge pods that you can use uh, if you don't have a custom setup yet. It includes all the hardware, all the wiring, the sensors, everything that you need in order to install these gauge pods onto your vehicle. Here is the backside of the custom carbon fiber gauge pod. Obviously this is real carbon fiber, so it's extremely light. So far I'm extremely happy with how this came out and we will see how the final fitment looks after we finish this mod. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do before I even start any interior removal and uh, modification is I'm going to set up my oil pressure sensor adapter. I'm going to install it on the vehicle and run the engine to check to make sure that there are no oil leaks present after I do the mod for the oil pressure sensor. Um, it's important to know that you should disassemble this adapter before you even put it on the car and add Teflon tape to every single thread that you can see on this adapter. It does have some O-rings built on the inside of the adapter, but it's always good to add some Teflon tape for an added layer of security to prevent any oil leaks from this install for the oil pressure sensors. In addition, since the factory oil pressure sensor will sit on top, I would recommend you add some new Teflon tape 
to the old oil pressure sensor that you add to the top of this adapter as well. So as far as the stock oil pressure sensor or stock oil pressure switch is concerned, you're actually gonna find it right below your EGR valve right here. And if you follow, look under this coolant pipe, here's the switch right there in the stock location. It has a rubber boot that is covering the switch. So all we need to do is pull back the rubber boot unplug the connector, and then we can remove the oil pressure sensor, I believe, with a 24 millimeter socket. A deep socket would be preferable. So here is the OEM oil pressure switch, which we will add to the top of the oil pressure adapter right here. And before we do that, I'm actually just gonna clean up the threads, add some uh, Teflon tape to the threads. Okay, so it looks like because of the location of the stock oil pressure switch is concerned, I'm going to have to plug up two of these holes first with the plugs that are included with the adapter. And then I'm going to have to install this adapter assembly in such a way where I can get clearance to add the aftermarket oil pressure switch on the side of this adapter. Here is an installed look on how the oil pressure adapter, the stock oil pressure switch, and the aftermarket oil pressure sensor are all installed in the stock location. It is a little tricky to get the orientation right. I did have to angle that adapter in such a way um, more towards the exhaust system in order to install the actual aftermarket oil pressure sensor. After I got that threaded on, then I proceeded to rotate the oil pressure adapter assembly and the stock oil pressure switch to where the aftermarket oil pressure sensor sits straight up at a 90 degree angle. Now that the oil pressure sensor for the gauge is installed and everything is working as normal with no leaks, we're going to move on to the next step. So the next step is the step that's gonna suck. And so I'm gonna have to run wiring from these sensors that I'm adding to the Honda Civic all the way up to the upper dash panel where the upper instrument cluster is at. Um, so this is the wiring harness with the connector for the oil pressure sensor for the gauge. It is pretty long. Um, if I do have to extend it, I'll probably open up this end right here and splice in additional wiring in order to extend the harness. I'll know more once I get this wire harness for the oil pressure sensor routed. Um, I'm gonna have to do a lot of work just to get this oil pressure sensor through the, through the firewall. I'm gonna have to take off the wiper blade arms, I'm gonna have to take off the upper cowl assembly uh, in order to get to the factory wire harness location that goes through the firewall. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So there is my aftermarket oil pressure sensor. I'm going to need to get this wire harness from that sensor through the firewall and inside the vehicle. In order to do that, I don't know how well you can see, but back here towards the center of the firewall is a grommet and the wire harness that goes through the firewall. My goal is to get all of my wire harnesses for my aftermarket sensors through that grommet and onto the other side inside the vehicle. I'll show you the opposite side just so you can have a reference as to what I'm talking about. But I need to get my wires through that grommet and inside the vehicle. Next to the accelerator pedal, if you look up, you'll see the wire harness right there. 
this guy right here. This is the other side, and that's what I need to get my wires through. I'm gonna create a hole, poke the wires through, and then I'll be able to feed the wires up into the location where I'll install the gauges. But this is the inside of what it looks like, and it's up into the right of your accelerator pedal. I'm basically gonna take all of this apart in front of the windshield, the front cowl, and the plate that is underneath it. I do have a front strut bar underneath the cowl, so I may have to remove my strut bar as well in order to get access to that grommet on the firewall. All right, here's how everything looks with the front cowl removed from the Honda Civic, including the lower plate that's underneath the front cowl. Uh, and now that I have that removed, I have a lot more space back here to get to this grommet, which is behind this main wire harness loom. In addition to the oil pressure sensor wire harness that I'm routing through the firewall, this is my O2 sensor wire harness that I'm also going to route through the firewall. And the uh, connector that goes through the firewall right here is a lot bigger than the oil pressure sensor version. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Phillips screwdriver, a really long Phillips screwdriver. I'm gonna add some electrical tape around this onto the screwdriver, stab through the grommet, and uh, that way I could get it through the firewall. And then I'm going to route this O2 sensor wire harness towards the same location that the secondary O2 sensor is on the stock engine. And if you look right here, this down here is my secondary O2 sensor. Right here is where the uh, secondary O2 sensor would actually uh, connect to for the stock O2 sensor. So I'm going to route my wire harness to meet this location as well. The uh, Pro Sport wideband air fuel ratio sensor, uh, it does have a very long wire harness attached to it already. So by just pre-routing this in the stock secondary O2 sensor connector area, I should be good to go for when I'm ready to add my wideband air fuel ratio gauge. I have now officially routed the wiring harness for both my oil pressure sensor and my wideband O2 gauge. I know this is really quick on the video, but it took me a couple hours just to get everything routed and everything put through the firewall. Um, obviously, I still need to put the front cowl and wiper blades and wiper arms and all that fun stuff back on. Um, but if we look down here, there's the aftermarket oil pressure gauge with the wire harness and the connector connected to it. And then what I've done for my wideband O2 sensor connector is right over here where the secondary oxygen sensor connector is located. I've just placed my aftermarket wideband O2 sensor connector in the same location. The wideband O2 sensor that comes with the gauge kit has a really long wire harness on it as well. So I figure I could locate the aftermarket wideband O2 sensor connector near the secondary O2 sensor for the Honda Civic. And here you can see that both wire harnesses follow the same path. They're all zip tied to the engine wire harness assembly. Coming over here, over by the throttle body, routed over here past the intake and right here I left some slack for any engine movement and at the very back you can now see where the O2 sensor harness and the oil pressure gauge harness go through this grommet back here. In order to get the wires through the grommet, I poked a couple small holes with my pocket screwdriver, and then I taped each harness one at a time to a long Phillips screwdriver to where I could just push the other end of the wire harness with the connectors through the grommet 
and to the back side into the interior of the vehicle. So now that I have both sensor harnesses routed and ready to go, I could show you the inside of the interior and show you the other end of the grommet on the firewall. So obviously right here we have both the wire harnesses and if we go down here you can follow the wires you can follow the wires up to the grommet right there so that's where they enter in through the firewall obviously I have a lot of wire harness for these sensor wires left for the inside of the vehicle that'll give me whatever slack I need in order to route these in the correct locations so that way I can have my gauge pods up here by the upper instrument cluster. So with that done, I'm going to put the front cowl back on and uh, I should be done under the hood for a while if not for the rest of this install and uh, we can move on to the next step. Now that I've done all of the wiring uh, under the hood for each of the sensors, the wideband O2 sensor and the oil pressure sensor, now I'm doing the wiring inside of the vehicle. Um, I did take a few pieces of the dash apart and in order to take it apart, you'll take the lower dash off first. It just snaps into place so you can just pull it off. Afterwards, you'll take the upper dash panel off and the trim piece that we're going to replace for the carbon fiber gauge pod. So I've routed all of the wiring that I need to uh, for the gauges themselves inside the interior of the vehicle and I did take off a whole bunch of trim components. It's really easy to do so I'm not going to go over it into detail but I will explain how I took them off. Uh, the first thing you'll want to take off is the lower instrument panel that is completely snaps into place so you just have to pull the panel off then you'll have a middle panel right here that helps uh, cover the uh, lower instrument cluster and this middle panel is completely snap in as well except for one screw that you'll find right here and that screw will be revealed when you take the lower panel off after you take off the middle panel uh, you can pull the entertainment system panel back that's completely snap in you just pull it back you don't have to disconnect anything just pull it back to give yourself some clearance because when you go to take off the upper instrument panel you're gonna have three screws that you're gonna need to remove one right here one over here and one behind the entertainment system panel right there so that's how I took off all three panels on the dash to route all of my wiring. With the uh, oil pressure gauge over here, you do have a power wire harness and then your oil sensor harness in the middle. Um, the power harness, uh, the way it comes uh, from Pro Sport, it's pretty short in length. So I did have to go ahead and extend all four wires for the power wire harness. Um, if you're doing any of combination of gauges, you can actually use a daisy chain harness to power up each and every gauge with the exception of one gauge, and that is the wideband O2 sensor. You cannot daisy chain the wideband O2 sensor. So because of that, I had to power up the oil pressure gauge on its own. And again, I did have to extend the harness, uh, all four wires which we'll go over in a little bit. And then as far as the power for the wideband O2 sensor is concerned, it's actually controlled by a little black box or a module. And so when you run power, you run power to the module, and then you have a gauge harness that goes from the module to the actual gauge. And that's what I routed up here 
is the gauge harness on the back side of the wideband O2 sensor. Now, even though you can't daisy chain the wideband O2 sensor with any of the other gauges, you can tap into the same power supply as all of your other gauges as well in the same circuit or the same area. So that's how I ended up making my little aftermarket harness right here. It goes back behind the instrument cluster down through the instrument panel. And this is where we meet over here. Here's a portion of it all zip tied and secured. And then if we go down here, we can now see the uh, interior fuse panel that I've tapped into. And, uh, and as far as the wire harness is concerned, for all of the gauges, you have four wires to power the uh, gauge that you're trying to set up. If you have a wideband O2 sensor, it's the same thing. You're just plugging into the box or the module that comes with the wideband O2 sensor and not directly into the gauge. Really, for all of your gauges, you're gonna have a four wire power wire harness type setup. The red wire is gonna be a constant 12 volt power. So that means even if the car is off and the key is out of the ignition, this red wire will still see 12 volts. The white wire is a ignition power wire, which only sees 12 volts when the key is put into the on position for the ignition cylinder. The black is always gonna be your ground wire and the orange wire you connect to your headlight circuit. So that way when you turn your headlights on at night, it automatically dims the gauge's brightness by about 15% or so. And if you can see right here, I have fuse number one right here. I just added an add a fuse circuit or a, a fuse tap circuit, which I purchased off of Amazon. And if you can see uh, for number one fuse, which is the power window, that is my white wire. And then fuse number 16, which is right here. This is for my right headlamp fuse. And I tapped into this one using the orange wires. And then number 22 is actually an unused slot, uh, but it does have 12 volt power at all times, even with the key out of the ignition. So this is where I tapped my red wires into this number 22 fuse slot for a constant 12 volt circuit. So I just use these add fuses and uh, with the add fuse, what it does is it just plugs into the original fuse location the fuse closest to the box is your original fuse. Um, since this one didn't have a fuse, it was unused. I didn't have to put a fuse into the first slot. And then the second slot, I added a five amp fuse. And this is where the power is traveling through in order to feed my gauges with the red wire. Then your black ground, I actually went in through here. There is a metal bar that runs along the instrument panel area and on that metal bar there is a location with ground wires attached to it. I just crimped on a little fisheye uh, connector uh, end and put my black wire on that same ground location. It's really hard to see underneath the dash so I don't think I'll be able to get there right now but uh, I did spend a lot of time upside down uh, routing these, these wires and securing them in a way where they won't rub or cause any problems down the road. So now that we have a general idea of how the gauges are powered, I'm now going to put my key in the ignition and so that way we can actually test the gauges, make sure they actually power up and uh, everything's working properly. Here is the wideband O2 sensor gauge. And this will take a little while because it has a heated oxygen sensor to actually display the info. Here I have my oil pressure gauge. It's beeping only because the engine isn't running, so it sees zero PSI for engine oil pressure. So it's warning me that the oil pressure is too low. But they're all operational. I'm gonna turn the car off. All right. They both 
are operational. They're both powered up. And so now the fun part is putting all of this interior trim back together. And then uh, the last step will be to actually install the carbon fiber gauge pod and uh, set up these gauges. And now, finally, on to the best and last part of this installation, and that is going to be installing the carbon fiber gauge pod to replace the factory trim piece on the left hand side and install the gauges. So, in order to install the carbon fiber gauge pod from XB Racing, if you flip it over on the back side, you're going to have three tabs right here and each one of these tabs is going to need a clip that you will be swapping over from the factory trim piece. On the back side, we have a multitude of white clips. We're only gonna need three for this carbon fiber gauge pod. And uh, we're just going to remove them from the OEM trim piece and install them onto these tabs on the carbon fiber version. Here's the OEM trim piece. Here's the carbon fiber version from XB Racing. Now we get to see how well the fitment is for this carbon fiber gauge pod compared to OEM trim. So as you can see, I have my carbon fiber dual gauge pod from XB Racing. I've got two gauges, both my boost gauge and my oil pressure gauge. And then I also have my wideband air fuel ratio gauge. Obviously my boost gauge isn't going to show boost until I actually get to boosting the motor. I would like to run a supercharger setup. So Kraftworks, if you're watching this video, I would really greatly appreciate a sponsorship to show off your supercharger that you have for the 8th gen Honda Civic. I know you say it's only for the coupe, but I can make it work for the sedan. All right, so on my R18 engine, I have my fuel rail behind the valve cover area over here. And on top of the fuel rail, there's a plastic trim cover, I guess just to help block heat or as a bit of protection. So what I did was I ended up taking off the front cowl so I can access the backside a little better. And then right here, you can see where I added the vacuum sensor. And the vacuum sensor, I have a vacuum hose that sort of ties in over here. I don't know how well you can see it. There's like a little filter that's included with the gauge itself. And I tied into the brake booster vacuum line, which is back here towards the firewall. And so by tying into the brake booster vacuum line, I made sure to tie it into the vacuum line at a point that comes after the engine, but before the check valve that's built into the brake booster vacuum line. And then on the other side, you actually have the electrical connector. And then I just fed the electrical wires through the firewall, just like the other two sensors. As far as installing the vacuum sensor is concerned, or the boost sensor, I just bolted it down onto the little plastic trim that covers the fuel rail on the back side of the engine here. So I took the plastic trim off, drilled two holes, bolted the sensor down onto the plastic trim, and then put the trim back on top of the fuel rail. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how everything looks when I power everything up. All right. You've got your opening ceremony. The air fuel ratio gauge will blink to let you know that the 
wideband air fuel sensor is heating up to give you an accurate reading. But here's what all the gauges look like so far. Got our oil pressure gauge. Our boost gauge that's currently only used to read vacuum. And then the wideband air fuel ratio gauge. That's going to do it for this video. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Don't forget to like the video if you thought it was helpful and make sure to subscribe if you want to see future content on the 8th gen Honda Civic. I appreciate your time and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.